President Draupadi Murmu or Yashwa. In the video urges negotiators to of Naga political issues to pre refer to the competencies agreed in the framework agreement signed between Government of India and SCNIM. While on NIDA agitation, Rio says Government of Government stands by its decision, through though everyone has a right to demand. Nagaland In-Service Doctors Association calls off their proposed steer on Monday in view of the presidential polls. Earlier, State Health, Family, Health and Family Welfare Minister S. Pangyu Pom appealed association to suspend the agitation in order to peaceful completion of the polls. On the first day of the monsoon session, sloganeering and disruption by opposition party members leads to adjournment of both the houses for the entire day. Opposition leader starts sloganeering against the central government, saying the dictatorship will not go on over price hike and GST issues. NDA candidate Jagdeep Dankar files nomination for upcoming vice presidential election slated for August 6. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Home Minister Amit Shah, Defence Minister Raj Nath Singh, Union Minister Nitin Gadkari, BJP National President J.B. Nadda, among top brass of leaders who accompanied Dankar during the nomination filing. Hello and welcome to NLTV's News Now. I am Johanna Muri and now we'll have a look at the news in details. As India is to elect its new president, voting for the 16th national election is underway, in which NDA candidate Draupadi Murmu is pitted against joint opposition candidate Yashwan Sinha. Earlier on Monday, polling began at 10 a.m. at the Parliament House and the state legislative assemblies with MPs. Agalant also elected representatives to the 60-member state legislative assembly, exercise their franchise to elect the next president. Chief Minister Nifirio, UDA Chairman T.R. Zilin, Co-Chairman Kuzo Lezo Azonino, PhD Minister Jacob Jimomi were among the lawmakers who cast their votes in the State Assembly complex. In New Delhi, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was among the first to cast his vote in the parliament. Union Home Minister Amit Shah, former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, Chief Minister from across the country, and other MPs and MLAs cast their votes in all around 4,000 800 MPs and MLAs were casted their votes until 5 p.m. on Monday to elect the 5th, 15th President of India. The counting of votes will take place on July 21, while the next President will take oath on July 25th. It is worth mentioning that the President is elected by the members of the Electoral College, consisting of elected members of Parliament and that of all the state assemblies including National Capital Territory of Delhi and the Union Territories of Puticherry. Nominated members of Parliament, state assemblies and members of the Legislative Council are not eligible to vote. A total of 776 members of Parliament and 4,033 MLAs will vote in the presidential elections. Chief Minister Nifirio on Monday requested the negotiating parties of the Naga political issues to refer to the competencies agreed in the framework agreement signed between Government of India and NSC and IM on 23rd August 2015. While addressing the media after exercising his franchise for the 16th presidential election at Nagaland Legislative Assembly, Rio said that the competency words are inserted in the framework agreement and Nagaland government is unaware of it as it is not a party to the peace talks. Rio also went on to say, referring to the third resolution taken during its meeting held on July 16 in Kohima, Parliamentary Committee has urged upon Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Home Minister Amit Shah to call NSC and IM leaders for talks and find a solution to the impending issues. In regard to Nagaland In-Service Doctors Association agitation over the superannuation rule, Rio commented that everyone has a right to demand but the government will stand by its decision which has been made before. It is to be noted that Nagaland's cabinet meeting on April 21 decided to increase the superannuation of doctors, government doctors with some riders on the cabinet decision made that extension of service to 62 years will be given under one condition that will be re-employment in the clinical sector till 62 years.
agreed to. In February, in the 3rd August 2015. So it is signed by them. And it is that company's word is inserted in a framework. So that secret, we don't know, it is with them. That's why we requested the Prime Minister and the Home Minister to call and discuss, sort it out. Agreed position and the competition clauses will be club up together. Okay. Will be club up together. They will do. They will do a comprehensive, comprehensive study of both the both the issues, and then they will bring out a common draft. And once that common draft is brought out, then it will be given to public domain for public acceptance. Then only the final. Can we expect something? That I'm not very sure. That oh. I'm not very sure. Oh, the seven MBG, the they're already ready there in Delhi. But now, as per our resolution, the government of India has to take it seriously and invite the IM. The core committee of Nagaland In-Service Doctors Association has decided to call off their respondent still on Monday. The decision comes after Health and Family Welfare as Pang Yupom appealed to the association to suspend the agitation in light of 15th presidential election that is to be held on Monday. Issuing a circular, NIDA core committee informed about the suspension of the agitation. NIDA also took the decision as three districts, we need of Twinsang, Noklag and Shamator have withdrawn themselves from the proposed steer. Furthermore, the association has called a meeting on Monday to discuss future course of actions. Notably, over the agitation of NIDA that was scheduled to begin on Monday, Chief Minister Nifiri also said that everyone has a right to demand, but the government will stand by the decision. The Angami Students' Union and the Nagaland Medical Dealers Association have extended their support to three days superannuation agitation of the Nagaland In-Service Doctors' Association. Angami Students' Union have showed their support to NIDA for rejecting government's decision for re-employment of retired doctors for two years. The union also urged upon the government to concede to the genuine demands of Nagaland In-Service Doctors' Association. The union questioned as to why government is still adamant on questioning on re questioning the required medical doctor's post and failing to conduct examination, which is depriving the uneducated employee doctors, medical doctors. Moreover, a quick shortage of medical doctors in government, health institution has been adversely affecting the Nagaland health care system. The union also expressed its concern over the development of the two, pro two proposed medical college, both in infrastructural and outsourcing human resource, and urge upon the government to bring the dreamed medical colleges into reality as assured in the recently concluded state assembly. Thus, as the superannuation rule continues, government, Governor of Nagaland has ordered against the call for the indefinite cease work by Nagaland In-Service Doctors Association and has prohibited it. Notably, the Nagaland In-Service Doctors Association, through a circular on July 11, had announced that all its members would cease work and only provide emergency services from July 18. Furthermore, they had also stated that if their demands aren't made till J July 21, then they will also suspend the emergency services, following which the Chief Secretary J. Alam on Sunday warned the members against going for agitation or, ce or cessation of work. In addition, he also informed that if anyone is found carrying out any such act, then it would be considered illegal. While citing of the Section 4 of the Nagaland Essential Service Act 1978, the Chief Secretary maintained that a doctor is employed, deployed in any government held unit facility who goes for cessation of work strike would on conviction be punished under the act.
of the Legislature Party Wing of Naga People's Front, Kuzo Lezonino, on Monday said that there should not any confusion, there should not be any confusion over two separate agreements in terms of finding an amicable solution to the Naga political issue. Referring to the framework agreement and agreed position, Nino on the sidelines of presidential polls, as State Legislative Assembly on Monday spoke to media persons where he said that there cannot be two agreements. He further stated that the agreed position signed with Naga national political groups in 2017 and competency clause under the framework agreement signed with NSC and IM in 2015 would be clubbed together. He further added that a comprehensive study of both issues will be done and a common draft will be made, which will be available in public domain as well as for acceptance of common men to come to a final conclusion. Reiterating the resolution taken by the Parliamentary Committee on the Naga political issue during the meeting, on July 16, Nino urged the Centre to invite NSC and IM for talks. I have always stated, that, you see, the agreed position and the competition clauses will be club up together. Okay. Will be club up together. They will do. They will do a comprehensive, comprehensive study of both the both the issues, and then they will bring out a common draft. And once that common draft is brought out, then it will be given to public domain. For public acceptance, then only the final agreement. The seven bridges, they are already ready there in Delhi. But now, as per our resolution, government of India has to take seriously and invite the IM. No, it cannot be two different agreements. I have always stated, you see, the agreed position and the competition clauses will be club up together. We will club up together. They will be. The Mokokchung Asam, Battalion Assam Rifles organized a medical camp on Monday at New Chengtia and for the surrounding villages under Mokokchung District. The motive of the camp was to provide free medical checkups to senior citizens ailing with various diseases and preliminary diagnosis. The camp was mainly aimed for the citizens living at remote areas, preventing them to avail proper medical attention. A total of 110 locals, including elders, ladies and children, were attended during the medical camp. The Mogokchung Battalion also carried out the promotion for Agnipath scheme and on-spot registration process was also done. The village authorities and the general public thanked the Assam Rifles for organizing their kind for their kind gestures. Mokokchung Battalion of Assam Rifles organized pre-recruitment drive under Join Army, Join Indian Army Agnipat Scheme at a boy public ground in Mon District on Monday. The event was organized with a aim to generate awareness of the Agnipat Scheme and encourage youth to join Indian Army as Agniverse for brighter and secure future by serving the country. More than 105 potential candidates were screened during the event, including 95 boys and 10 girls candidates. During the campaign, pamphlets giving out the details of Agnipat scheme were distributed and online rain task calm documents check facility was provided to the youths, followed by refreshments. The campaign was also attended by a boy KU president, Shakang Konyak, ATSU president, AASU president, head GP of a boy, other prominent personalities and locals of Apoi town to boost morale of the youths from Aboy region. Notably, the village prominent and village elders appreciated the efforts of the Mokokchung Battalion and expressed gratitude for organizing a meaningful event for noble cause.
The Dimapur Narcotic, the Dimapur Excise Narcotic Cell Enforcement Duty arrested one individual on Friday on charges of possession of Indian-made foreign liquor and beer. According to Deputy Commissioner of Excise Kakoto Sumi, the duty party seized 1,710 bottles of assorted Indian-made foreign liquor and beer around 6.40 a.m. in the morning. The duty party was led by AIE Chuba, Y. Yim, and the accused has been identified as Manoj. Katoho Sumi notified that the seized items have been deposited in the office in the office Malkana and the case is presently under investigation as per relevation provision of the NLTP Act 1989. Nagaland on Sunday reported five new COVID-19 cases and one fresh fatality. Notably, all the new cases were from Kohima district. State's active load has now increased to 59. Meanwhile, COVID daily has also climbed up to 35,603. Furthermore, 33,283 patients across the state have also so far recovered from the infection. Manipur Governor L.A. Ganeshan is now set to discharge the functions of the Governor of West Bengal in addition to his own duties. Notably, this development came after West Bengal Governor Jagdeep Danka resigned from his post owing to his nomination for the National Democratic Alliance Vice President's candidate. Furthermore, Ganesh is set to carry out the duty until regular arrangements are made. On the first day of monsoon session, Raja Sabha proceedings were adjourned following sloganeering and disruption by opposition party members leading to the adjournment of the House for the entire day. A joint opposition including Congress, Amadmi Party and Shiv Sena created ruckus at the pandominium in the House after oath, affirmation and arbitrary references. The opposition members raised issues on price rise and GST while interrupting the ongoing speech of the Raja Sabha chairman. The opposition leader stated that sloganeering against the central government saying Tanashi Nahi Chalega meaning dictatorship will not go on aimed at the prolonged noise. Nadu continued the proceedings for a few minutes but later adjourned the house on for the day. On the other hand the lower houses of the parliament the Lok Sabha was also adjourned till Tuesday. This was done so that the members could vote in the presidential polls. As the house met for the first time in the monsoon session of parliament three MPs took oath as members of the Lok Sabha. On the first day of monsoon session of the parliament, the 28 newly elected MPs took oath in the Rajya Sabha on Monday. The oath takers included cricketer turned politician Harbhajan Singh, daughter of former Bihar Chief Minister Lalu Prasad Yadav Misa Bharti, and BCCI Vice President Rajiv Shukla. While others took oath takers were A. Rao Mina, Vijay Sai Reddy, Keru Mato, Sambhala Saran Patel, Ranjit Ranjan, Maharashtra, Maji Aditya Prasad, Praful Patel, Imran Pratakiri, Sanjay Rod, Sasmit Patri, Patra, Sandeep Kumar Patak, and Vikramjit Singh Shani. Furthermore, Rajdeep Singh Surjawala, P. Chitambaram, Kapil Sibal, R. Girlal, Al. R. Grill Yajan, S. Kalyan Sundararan, K. R. N. Rajesh Kumar, Javed Ali Khan, V. Vijendra Prasad were others among those who took the oath. Meanwhile, renowned former athlete P. T. Usha and legendary music, compass, music composer skipped the oath due to the unknown reasons. Presiding over the last session as chairman of the Rajya Sabha, M. V. K. Nehru on Monday urged the MPs to be different and better. Better than they were in the last five years when 57% of the House sittings were partly or fully disrupted. On the opening day of the monsoon session of Parliament, he said that this is the last session in the 75th years of independence and MPs should give their best performance to make it a memorable session. Nehru's five-year term of Vice President of India and Chairman 
chairman of the Rajya Sabha ends on August 10. Nehru said that during the session, 13 sessions, 141 of the 248 scheduled full sittings, accounting for 57% of the total sittings, were disrupted partly or fully. While addressing the MPs before the start of the monsoon session of Parliament, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Narendra Modi urged the MPs to discuss and debate with an open mind. Prime Minister Modi also asserted the importance of the session by highlighting that, highlighting the fact that in the session the nation is about to get its next president and vice president. Meanwhile, Prime Minister spoke on the important role of opposition to be able to make constructive decisions. After addressing the MPs, Prime Minister Modi proceeded to cast his vote for presidential polls. कालखंड एक प्रकार से बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है ये आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव का कालखंड है 15 अगस्त का विशेष महत्व है और आने वाले 25 साल के लिए देश Amidst the ensuing election for choosing the next vice president of the country, the NDA backed Jagdeep Dhankar filed his nomination for a post of vice president. In addition, the nomination was filed in the presence of the Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Furthermore, other dignitaries who were witness to this event were Home Minister Amit Shah, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, Union Minister Nitin Gadgari, BJP National President J.B. Nadda, and other BJP leaders. Meanwhile, Margaret Alva has been named by the opposition as its candidate for the post of vice president but it's yet to file her nominations notably the vice presidential election is scheduled to be held on august 6. Chief Sena MP Sanjay Rot on Sunday said that the party will support the opposition vice presidential election candidate Margaret Alva and for the presidential polls, Sena will lend support to Draupati Murmu out of sentiment as Murmu is a tribal woman and Maharashtra is largely tribal. MP Rot also said that many of our MPs and MLAs are tribals. Furthermore, for the post of vice president, Alva and Dankar will face each other. The Supreme Court has agreed to hear the plea filed by Uttar Thakri camp challenging the disqualification proceedings against them under the 10th schedule along with the other petitioners related Maharashtra's political crisis. Meanwhile, the hearing on the plea related to Maharashtra political crisis are scheduled on July 20. Customers are now set to pay more on certain products and services as new goods and services tax rates is set to come into effect from today. The GST Council chaired by Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaram had earlier on last month imposed tax on a host of goods and services, notably 5% GST on prepacked labelled food items and on hospital rooms with rent above 5000 is set to be raised. Maps and charts including at least will at least will will attract 12% GST, while 18% GST will be levied on Tetra Packs and on fees charged by banks for the issues of checks. Solar water heater now attracts 12% GST and work contractors for roads, bridges, railway metro, equivalent treatment plants and crematoriums will also set tax going up to 18%. Meanwhile, taxes will be cut on ostomy appliance and transport goods and passengers by ropeway to 5%. Renting of drugs, goods, carriage wear, where the cost of fuels is included will attract 12% lower G rate, GST rate. GST exemption on the transport of passengers by air to and from northeastern states and 
will be restricted to economy classes only. In addition, electric vehicles, whether or not fitted in battery pack, is also said to be eligible for the consensual GST rate of 5% from July 18. India on Sunday reported 16,935 new COVID cases and 51 virus-related deaths. With the addition of new cases, country's active case load has now climbed to 1 lakh 44,264. Meanwhile, 16,069 16, patients have also recovered from the infection in the last 24 hours. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is set to address the Naval Innovation and Indigenization Organization Seminar. Seminar on Monday at Dr. Ambedkar International Center, New Delhi. During the program, PM will unveil sprint challenges which are aimed at giving a boost on the usage of the indigenous technology in the Indian Navy. Notably, the seminar aims to engage Indian industry and academia awards achieving self-reliance in the defense sector. Meanwhile, the second day of the seminar will also witness our outreach to the Indian Ocean region in line with government's vision of security and growth for all Indian for all in the region. Under the Azadi Ke Amrit Mahotsav, the tricolor is set to be hosted atop more than 20 crore houses across the country from August 13 to 15. Notably, flag hosted will be hosted under central government Hargar Tiranga campaign. All government and private establishments will also be involved. Meanwhile, Union Home Minister Amit Shah reviewed the re preparations of the campaign with Chief Minister of States, Lieutenant Governors and Administrators of Union Territories on Sunday. It may be mentioned that over 100 crore people are set to participate in the campaign to re to repredict themselves to the service of Mother India. A massive fire broke out in an appeal warehouse under Duvada Police Station in Andhra Pradesh, Vishakapatnam on Sunday. Meanwhile, two fire tenders were rushed to the spot and fire was brought under control. No casualties were reported. Notably, the expected loss of property was around 2 crores. On Monday, devotees of Lord Shiv Sena rushed to temples to offer prayers to the Hindu god across the country as it was the first Monday of the Swan Ma Sawan month. Notably, Hindus worship Lord Shiva and fast every Monday in Sawan month. Furthermore, Sawan month is considered as important day for the enti entire Indian subcontinent as, as it is connected to the arrival of Southwest Monsoon. Thirteen people died after a Maharashtra government bus plunged into a river into River Narmada in Madhya Pradesh on Monday. The bus carrying 55 passengers was headed to Pune for Mindore when it skipped off a slippery road and fell into the river after breaking the railing of a bridge on Agra Mumbai Highway of Madhya Pradesh, Dar district. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan in a series of tweets said that district administration team was present at the accident site and the bus has been removed while expressing grief over the loss of the lives in the accident. MPCM also instructed to make arrangements for proper treatment of the injured. The bus belonging to Maharashtra State Transport Corporation has been retrieved amid heavy rainfall in the area. Meanwhile, Maharashtra CM Eknath Shinde has instructed MSRTC to provide ex gratia to 10 lakhs each of the keen of the deceased in the bus accident. Notably, Prime Minister Narendra Indra Modi has also expressed condolences after the accident. The Bollywood heartthrobs Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck finally got married on Saturday. In addition to the couples chose a chapel in Nevada to get married. While announcing their marriage through a newsletter, Jennifer Lopez referred to 
herself as Mrs. Jennifer Lynn Affleck. Notably, the couples first got engaged in 2002 but later called off their engagement and broke up. However, the couple got back together last year and after two decades of wait, they finally got married. That is all for now. Thank you for tuning in and for more updates, keep watching Nagaling TV.